In this clip, Uncle Bob speaks on how to write software in a way that makes debugging time so short that it may allow you to put away the debugger for good. The discipline of test-driven development works like this. There are three rules, and you have to follow all three of them. The first rule is you are not allowed to write any production code until you have first written a test that fails because the production code doesn't exist. Now, right away, that sounds stupid. If you're a programmer of any year's experience, that just sounds dumb. Like, what are you supposed to write? How do you test code that doesn't exist yet? What test are you going to write? So it doesn't make any sense right off the bat. But never mind that, because the second law is much worse. The second law says you are not allowed to write more of a test than is sufficient to fail. And not compiling is failing. So as soon as the test fails to compile, you must stop writing it. Now this is absurd because the first thing you're going to write is a test against code that does not exist, so it won't compile. And this, this puts you in this horrible loop. You will write a line of, of unit test. It won't compile. You will have to go over here and write a line of production code. That will make the unit test compile. And now the third law kicks in. And the third law says you are not allowed to write any more production code than is sufficient to pass the currently failing test. So now you're stuck in a loop. And this loop is five seconds long. Uh, I gotta write a line of unit test. Oh, it doesn't compile. Okay, now I gotta write a line of production code. Oh, that made it compile. Okay, another line of... This is your life now. <laughs> around and around that loop. Five seconds long. And if you're a programmer of any year's experience, this sounds stupid. Why would you do anything like this? You would never be able to write an if statement without interrupting yourself. You would never be able to write a while loop without interrupting yourself. You would never be able to finish a thought. You'd never be able to write a function. This would be tedious and slow and boring and annoying and it's exactly right. It's exactly what it is. But, and there had to be a but, didn't there? Imagine a group of people in a room like this following these three laws. Pick anyone you want of, of those people, any time you want. Everything they worked on worked a minute ago. And it doesn't matter who you pick, it doesn't matter when you pick them, it all worked a minute ago. What would your life be like if everything worked a minute ago? And this was always true. Everything worked a minute ago. How much debugging would you do? Who's good at the debugger? Who's got the debug foo in their fingertips? You know, all the hot keys, you know how to set break points and watch points and, and then break six times over here and then break seven times over here and wait for this variable to be a 37. You can really debug. This is not a skill to be desired. You don't want to be good at the debugger. The only way you get good at the debugger is to spend a lot of time debugging. I don't want you to spend a lot of time debugging. For you, I want the debugger to be a tool that you use once a month and you've forgotten all the hot keys. You don't know how the heck to do a break point or a step into or a step over. That's how I want your relationship with the debugger to be. Because I don't want you spending a lot of time debugging. Now, do I use a debugger? Yeah, but not very often. And even when I do use a debugger, I use it for an extremely brief period of time because I set a break point in some test that's failing and I step, 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 oh, some dumb thing I did over there because whatever it was, I did it a minute ago. Now, I could tell you that by following these three laws, you would reduce your debug time by some very large fraction. So keep that in mind. Uncle Bob claims that test-driven development reduces debugging time. While this can be true, it rests on one important but often overlooked assumption that the test suite meaningfully covers the units it's meant to validate. The challenge here is that code coverage often used as a proxy for test quality can be gamed. Developers may shift their focus from writing meaningful tests to simply achieving high coverage numbers. As a result, the tests may pass while critical bugs still lurk in the code, because the tests weren't designed with intent, only with metrics in mind. TDD is not immune to this. For it to deliver the benefits Uncle Bob suggests, you have to be able to trust the test suite. And the simplest way to build that trust is to keep the components under test as simple and as focused as possible. A function with 10 lines is easier to reason about than one with 200 or 1000. It has fewer edge cases, fewer paths to failure, 
and when something breaks, it's easier to identify the cause, simply because there is less to sift through. So yes, TDD can reduce the bug in time, but only when the tests are meaningful and the code is kept simple enough that those tests can be trusted. Thoughts? Subscribe for more.